Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the Raceworks S1 Pro pedal set, a hydraulic based pedal set that uses high quality parts and looks to be a very good option for those who are looking for this type of pedal set for sim racing. Time to put them through the SRG's review process and see how they do. So, let's get to it. Let's take a closer look at these Racework pedals. First off, out of the box, they have a nice professional look to them. The finish is very good. It is a hard anodized black in this case. And yeah, just out of the box, it, it has a good presentation. Now, these pedals have three main parts to them before we put like the slave cylinders and master cylinders on them. And each one of these pieces is the same. These two pieces here, the base plate, it's kind of a channel piece here, is the same across all three pedals along with the lever itself it is the same on all three pedals now these pieces start out their life as a solid billet of 6061 aluminum and then they are machined down to whichever part that they're going to be making and i'm showing you guys a shot here of the actual base plate or base assembly that's being machined in a cnc facility and you can see that it turns out to be this a U-shaped piece here that is very solid. It's just over five millimeters thick, what's left over here. And yeah, if you take this and try to squeeze it or anything, it's just solid all the way through, as you would imagine a piece of CNC aluminum would be. It is the same, again, with the holes back here. We have an adjustment for reach. Now, not so much for this. We can change the angle of this resistor that we have here. This is a linear potentiometer or linear position sensor, how you want to say it. And these tend to be very accurate. So I like that they're actually using this in here. So we have holes in here. We can adjust this if we're adjusting it on the pedal here and we're changing the angle of the pedal itself. And we'll go over the adjustments later on. Now, again, everything is finished very well here. As I said before, there is chamfering on every piece that you look at. We have chamfering there. We have, we don't have it on the inside of this lip, but we have it on the outside. We have it on the front face here. You can see how it follows the contour. Get a little pointer out here. Follows the contour there. Now the pedal face is actually done on both sides. You can see it over there kind of reflecting. And of course it goes up all the way around. And even in the webbing that we have, this left over in the lever itself, also has chamfering all the way on it on both sides and across the back of it here. So again, everywhere you look here, it has a good finish on it. A good attention to the detail, I think, that, yeah, you would expect at a pedal set at this price point. Now, the throttle itself is a spring actuated unit. You can see the spring here. You know, wrap it around the back here. You get a better look at it. I can get my little dongle out of the way through there. So there you can see it. And they do have another spring available. It's supposed to be 40% less than this one here that comes as an OME unit. And when I use it on the bench, it really, it has a good stiffness to it, but it's really hard to tell on the bench. You really have to have it underfoot with the weight of your leg behind everything and pushing on it with a shoe or a sock, if that's what you want to use, and, and to be able to tell if it's right for you or not. I think it's going to be okay for me. I don't want it too light, but I don't want it too heavy either. But there is an option, and you can switch this out, and there is a procedure to do that that's not too difficult. The Dongle on the back here, you can see there's a plug there that plugs into a harness that plugs into either a USB interface that's available or directly into a SimuCube wheel, be it the Pro, the Sport, or the Ultimate. You should be able to plug that in and use their interface for changing some settings. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail later on. Yeah, overall here, this well-presented pedal. Everything feels very solid. You can see it has the Racework logo engraved in there. So everything is very smooth. I can't find anything as far as a defect in this. It just looks really good. And we'll talk more about these bearings in here too that go into the pivots once we get to these other pedals. Let's take a quick look at the brake pedal. Now here they're using a little, something a little bit different than they use in their clutch pedal. Get this out of the way. Here they're using as their master cylinder a Tilton. Let's see it in there. A little tilt master cylinder. Now this is a full inch diameter cylinder. Most of these 
hydraulic pedals that I've gotten into the sim racing garage before typically are five eighths or something like that as far as the diameter of the cylinder. So these are pretty beefy and Tilton is a very good name brand. A lot of people use those. I consider them to be better than Willwood, but they're much more expensive too than the Willwood units, depending of course on what you're getting. It can be variable. So here we have again the same basic layout that's going on with the throttle. See we have the holes here. Now the holes here are going to be for adjusting the pedal angle. So we can change the pedal angle here and we can also change it back here if we want to move it back and forth for whatever reason. I would assume that we could use most of the, well you can see the brake pedal right now is standing pretty straight up. So if you want to lean it back you would have to actually come in here and screw some of this out or rather in further if the thread arrive will do that. And I can't tell that yet, so we're just going to have to wait until we get to the part where we're actually looking at that so I can determine that as far as adjustments go. But you can also adjust the angle here by moving this piece here back to the next hole. And of course that would make the whole pedal go backwards and then use the screw for a fine tune on the angle that you want. I'm not sure, I think this is going to be pretty good as far as the angle I'm going to use because I like a straight up angle on my pedal sets because of the way I sit in a GT position, my, my foot is almost flat, but not quite. It's got some angle to it. Flat probably wouldn't, completely flat probably wouldn't be very comfortable, but it does have some angle to it. But again, I'll see that once I have it mounted and actually using it. And again, that's very subjective. So we have our master cylinder here. Now these are aluminum reservoirs and they have a nice machined aluminum caps on them. And you can see there is a little weep hole in here. Now this ships with fluid in it. So, they have a piece of tape that is put on top of here to keep it from splashing out. So it ships with fluid in it, but you want to check the fluid when you get these to make sure there's enough in there. And it's very simple. You just pull the cap off here. A nice, again, machined aluminum piece. And there is fluid in here, so you want to be careful. You don't want to spill it on anything. It's very corrosive stuff. It's dot four. And yeah, very nice little cap here. And you can see in the reservoir, I'm going to try to show you this without... Uh, causing a catastrophe, but there it is in there. And that looks pretty good. They say two thirds full. And you can see also that this master cylinder is sitting at an angle. Let me put my cap back on here. And you don't have to tighten these really hard, just get a good snug on them. And you'll see it's le leaning at an angle. Let's go backwards there, you can see a little better. So there is a ball joint in here, like a rod end type of ball joint. I don't want to tilt it too much. Well, I can tilt it this way better, I guess. Hard to see it, but I think you can see it right there. So you can move this back and forth on that clevis in there. Or not clevis, but ball joint. So that, again, allows it to move back and forth. Now, the reason it's at an angle like this is because of the braided line that we have here. This is a metal braided line. It has a plastic covering on it so you cannot feel the braid itself. Kind of an uh, abrasion resistance kind of thing. And it puts a spring. I can actually squeeze this together like this. So you guys can see it. And you can see the master cylinder actually comes back up straight. But because of the spring action that this line is putting on it, it tilts it over. Which is fine. It doesn't matter. And it kind of actually gives it a unique look. There still allows enough hydraulic fluid to be in here that when you push and actuate these cylinders, nothing happens as far as you can't suck all that fluid up and then suck air in, as long as you have it two-thirds full. Now, also, typically what we'll see on master cylinder, slave cylinder setups, or any brake line type setups, we have the banjo bolt here, and we also have some of these copper washers. See them right there. And these are crush washers, so when we actually tighten this down, it crushes down and creates a nice seal with this soft copper in there. So yeah, that works really well. And yeah, just professionally done on the setup here. Now what's curious here is they have their own custom slave cylinder. And it actually has their logo on there. This is kind of a neat thing that they're not just going out and buying a whatever you can get as far as slave cylinders go, Will Wood, I think Tilton has them also, whatever brand that you get. So they're actually manufacturing their own slave cylinder, which brings its own set of issues that need to be solved when you're trying to build something like this. You would think it'd be just a very simple thing to be able to 
take a block of aluminum like this and bore a hole in it that's nice and straight so that you can put your piston in with the piston and then the rod that's pushing it and the seals and everything fits nice and straight and that's all there is to it. But it's a lot harder than that. The tolerances have to be very, very, very tight in a master cylinder or slave cylinder so that you don't get blow by the hydraulic fluid when you're actually using the system. Now you may get some blow by a little bit as the system is used over a period of time, but you can also bleed that out. They've actually compensated for that. You have a set screw back here, see this? So you can take this out and push this down and get rid of any excess fluid if there develops any problems as far as hydro lock, things like that. You can actually take this out and relieve the pressure of the vacuum and let it come back out, drain the fluid out and be able to service it in other words, which is nice to be able to service this stuff. And I think the consumer should be able to service it without too much issue. And they also have some jigs set up where they're testing these things. They actually test them over and over again with a hydraulic ram with everything put together and just test them to see how long they last with the seals. And they've told me that the latest piston design that they have is like their 11th generation in their final generation. They think they've got everything sorted, doing a lot of testing and a lot of different pieces that they've used here. So yeah, they do a lot of testing on these pedals. And not only do they test this here, but they also put it on a, another machine that has a jig on it that actually presses the brake pedal itself. I'll show you a little shot of that here. So they put that on the jig and just run that forever so that it's testing the whole system and testing for leaks and wear, and then they'll tear it all down and see what's wearing or what's not wearing. So this is a really the proper way to test these things. I'm pretty impressed with the process that, of testing and design that Raceworks is using in their system. Now, whether or not it's going to be a system that never leaks, I, I doubt it because Hydraulics, eventually, sometime it's going to leak because there are seals in hydraulics. But as long as it's serviceable is the important part. Yeah, any hydraulic system is going to develop leaks after a period of time. But here's the thing. This is just a hydraulic system we're using in a simulator, right? It's not like a system that we're using in a track car or a regular car, for that matter, a road car. So it, it's not going to get the same kind of abuse that you know, a track car would get as far as pressures and things like that. And temperatures also. The temperatures can get very, very high. And yeah, for the brake fluid and things like that, it won't burn out the brake fluid. So you shouldn't have to change it that much, I would admit, think anyway. So yeah, I like what I'm seeing here. We do have a pressure sensor in here. It is a 1600 PSI. I can't really show you that because I'd have to tilt it up too far. I think, man, you can see the writings right in there. So that actually says 1600 PSI on the brake and also a 1600 PSI on the clutch, even though the clutch is not going to have the same amount of pressure as the brake does when you're actually using it. We have some, a coil spring here out of the box that's used for a kind of a pre-travel on the brake pedal itself. So you can use this or we can replace some bumpers, but we'll talk about that in the adjustment section. You can bleed this if you need to. It's just a regular type of bleed screw here, right? Little bleed valve. We undo that and we press on the brake and hydraulic fluid will come out. We put a little rubber hose on there so you can do that. And, or you can use, if you have the power systems like I do that runs off compressed air, you could just bleed it that way. But you really shouldn't need to do all that with something as easy as this to, as far as bleeding. And I haven't seen any air bubbles in here. I've been looking for them because sometimes in shipping, uh, the hydraulics can get sloshed around, air can, get sucked into here a little bit if it get turns upside down or something like that. But I haven't seen any little teeny bubbles coming up yet. And I've been manipulating a little bit just to get a, a bench feel for it. But again, the final test is gonna be when we have it mounted. And I'll know right then, once it's mounted, if there's any air in the system, and then I'll, I'll bleed it out. But I don't think there is, because typically you'll see something like little air bubbles in there. Right, so what else we wanna talk about here? For the Closer look, I think that's it. Now, we will discuss, just like I was saying on the throttle there, I wanted to show you this because you can see it better. They're actually using a bearing in here in the, let's see, I can tilt this so you can see it. There's a bearing in here that is a needle bearing type of bearing, right? That they're using for the pivot point on these levers. So it's not just a bushing in here. It's actually a bearing with little needle bearings in it. And we have two spacers here. These are spacers that are spacing it, obviously, to keep it centered in this bottom base plate. So 
nicely done. Everywhere I look here, I really can't find too much to complain about. It's just well done. The faces on all the pedals are pretty much the same. Again, they have the chamfering around it. Now, there is that you can feel the edge on this chamfering. It's not sharp at all. I don't want you to think that at all, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but you can feel that there is an edge there, so it's not a, a swoopy, smooth roll to it on the chamfering. And it's also the same for the throttle pedal over here in the clutch. So I was f checking them out before just to always do that, see how the, the manufacturing process is done, their quality control, things like that. Now, you can adjust these pedals, and we'll talk about that in adjustments as far as the face plate on the pedal lever itself. But as you can see, the lever is the same, has the same holes as the throttle did, same holes back here like we talked about before. So let's go over here and get the clutch. Now, this one's a little different. Set up the same, of course, everything else is the same as across all three of them, like the lever and the base plate here, but again, a different face plate for the clutch. A typical, what I would say, a typical clutch pedal face type of design that you see on most racing pedals. And again, we have a hydraulic reservoir here, and we have a hydraulic cylinder here for the master cylinder. Now, this is not theirs. They source these somewhere else. It is a one inch. I think if you look down in there, you can see, let's see if I can bend it over for you. There we go. So this is a one inch, the exact same thing that's as far as size goes as the Tilton over here. But again, this is not a Tilton. They have the same kind of bearing in here, kind of a rod end bearing assembly that again allows this to rotate, not bind up is what we want. And you'll see this one's leaning just like the, the brake pedal is because of the spring action we have on this. There is a 1600 PSI pressure sensor on here and we have the same setup as far as the slave cylinder, the exact same slave cylinder that's on this one, which makes sense, right? Economy of production is the reason why they're doing a lot of these things. This just comes with a spring, and it's a pretty tight spring. I have about, I would say that's about 40 millimeter, maybe almost an inch of room there for using the clutch. And I kind of see if I can get it to move here. It's a pretty stiff spring, but again, underfoot, we'll just have to check that out. And of course, it is adjustable as far as spring tension. Yeah, everything else is the exact same thing as it is on the brake. Now, one thing I wanted to point out here, that these master cylinders, you can actually, or rather not the master cylinder, but the slave cylinder, you can actually take this off and put it on the other side. It has another set of holes here that you can use to mount. You see these long bolts that are going through the back of the housing here and attaching it to this base plate. So you can take this off and reconfigure it on the other side if you need to. Why would you need to do that? Well, I was thinking that if I'm, it depends on how I'm mounting them and how much space I have. If I'm doing a heel and toe, I want my brake pedal to be closer to my throttle and clutch needs to be somewhere around there, right? Not too far away, but it's not as critical as where I want my pedal face on the brake to be compared to or in relation to where the pedal face is on the throttle. So let's say I want to go back to left foot braking. And left foot braking with pedals real close like this is kind of uncomfortable, at least for me, because you know your waist starts out this wide and then as you come down the pedals, your legs have to come down to a point to manipulate them. That puts side stresses on your legs and your hips for long duration rides or drives that can be a little uncomfortable and start hurting actually. So the further I can get this over to this side, away from the throttle rather, like that, the easier it's gonna be on my legs and my body in general. So let's say I wanna get it closer to the clutch pedal than that and I can't, well, if I wanted to, I can actually take the slave cylinder off, relocate it to the other side, and then I'd have all that room like this. So I just did that. So now I could actually get the brake even that much closer to the clutch pedal to use. Now, again, the clutch pedal face, I might have to take that off. Depends. You know, the cool thing is what I'm trying to get to here is we have a lot of options as far as how you want to set these pedals up. And of course, you can see how far away I can have the brake pedal from the throttle in this orientation. Get this guy over here over here, depending as far as how far I can adjust laterally, depending on how I'm mounting the pedals in general. So yeah, that gives you more options. I kind of like that, that you can do that. Now I also want to show you that in the clutch, I haven't filled this in yet, filled this up rather, the clutch master cylinder is a little lacking on fluid. Again, you can see down this very clear fluid because it's brand new, number one, number two. This stuff's not going to get that dirty 
because it's never going to really get hot and you know expand and do all these other things and break down eventually. All hydraulic systems will break down, especially in racing cars. They usually have new fluid on them for every race. So you can see in here, you can't really see the fluid. I'm trying to, I don't want to tilt it too much because I don't want any air, but see that? Not as much as we had in the brake master cylinder. No big deal. We'll go ahead and fill that up two thirds full and then we should be good to go. Again, I don't see any air anywhere in here. And again, be careful when you open these things. You can get brake fluid on your hands. Get my towel there. And you want to get that off. It won't burn you or anything, but it's really corrosive on metals and paints and finishes though. So you want to be careful about that. Right, so that's the closer look on the Raceworks pedal set. And we'll talk about all the accessories that come with this pedal set next. Now I want to show you guys what comes in this box when you get your pedal set, the accessories and cabling. And in this particular instance, we have something a little different because this is a USB version of the pedal set. And this is what comes with it when you have that. I'll show you a little front shot here. There's their own custom aluminum enclosure for the electronics, very nice, which will help mitigate EMI issues. I really like it when a manufacturer does this to their electronics, as you guys may know if you've watched other pedal reviews. And yeah, this is definitely nice. <laughs> it's uh, again, a machined out of billet aluminum, and you can see it has their logo on there. It says Raceworks, and it says for the driver who knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I like that. 15 pin connector here, and I'll show you the cable in a minute for that. And of course we have a USB-B interface on this side that goes to the PC. Now, now that we're on that, let's show you the cabling here. Now here's the connector. And of course this is also a 15 pin DIN connector. And this is a male connector, right? You can see the pins in there. And on the other side, we have a couple of these snap-on connectors that have these nice rubber seals on it, very flexible and soft, so it seals out dust and moisture. And these will go on to the back of the clutch and the brake pedal because they have the pressure sensors there. And these will fit into the pressure sensors. Now, there is a key system here, a little clip system. You can see a little piece sticking up, little tab. And this will slide onto that tab with the slot piece that you see there. Very simple, just plug it in like that. <laughs> of course, you should have it sitting down when you do this because it definitely is a little stiff. And there we go. And to get it off, we would lift that tab back up and just kind of wiggle it loose like that. Very nice. Make sure nothing will come loose when you have it plugged in. Now the other plug is a female XLR plug or it looks like an XLR to me. And that is for our throttle pedal in the linear position sensor or potentiometer. And you can see it has a male XLR cable to it. So we'll be connecting these two guys together. Right. So we're going to be connecting this into our USB box, as you saw there. Very simple. We just take it and plug it in. Make sure you have the orientation right. Obviously, there is a shape to this. The, one, the side with most pins in it is the one that's on the top. So we'll slide that on like that. And we have these little screws in here. See a screw on either side of this plug? They're protruding here. And these will screw in and secure the plug to our USB conversion board that's in here. And this is a 12-bit board, by the way. So yeah, easy enough, just like hooking up computer stuff, we used, we used to do that with 15 pin DIN connectors. Now it seems like everything's USB though. All right, so we'll go ahead and set that aside. Now, this is a cable. And this is a very long cable, <laughs> so you shouldn't have any problem with reach. But this is a cable that allows you to take this cable, and again, we're gonna connect it into the female side of the 15 pin connector. That would be like this. Again, make sure about orientation. Now, if you'll notice here, these screws are coming out of this connector, but we also have screws coming out of this connector. <laughs> so let's see, let me go ahead and put it on there. So they're, they're kind of hitting each other. And what you could do, I believe this will work, but we'll, I'll test it out, is take these screws out 
and just run these screws from this one into this to keep it from nice and secure and coming apart. On the other end of this, go ahead and pull this back off. We have a male connector, and this is what can connect to the back of the SemiCube wheel. And that way we don't use this USB conversion box at 12 bit. We use the electronics in the SemiCube wheelbase itself, which happens to be 16 bit. Pretty nice. So we go from 12 bit to 16 bit resolution, which is always nice if you can get more resolution. However, 12 bit's pretty good too. <laughs> I've never had a problem with 12 bit, to be honest. And they do include a nice, not shielded, but a braided kind of cable here for USB. And they are gold tipped. We have the USB B connection and we have the A connector here. Very nice. They include a few tools so you can work on your pedals. You have an eight millimeter wrench and it looks to be a decent quality. What's the name on this? Zebra, it looks like. Yeah, I think that's called Zebra. I don't know how well that's gonna show up, but there you go. So we have an eight mil and we have a quarter inch. Now quarter inch is gonna be for the bleed valves on our cylinders in case you need to or want to bleed your cylinders out. And the eight millimeter is gonna be for other nuts on these pedals. I'm trying to look where that one is. I believe it's the adjustment down here. Let's see. Yes. So the adjustments for travel, and we'll go over adjustments later on, is gonna be an eight millimeter wrench. And we have a an M4 and an M3 Allen wrench. And those are for these guys on the side of our clutch and brake pedal for adjusting this rod up and down. All right, so we get some tools, we get some extra bumpers, and we'll talk more about these bumpers once we get to the brake adjustments section. And we get some of these abrasive single-sided setups for if you want to put this on your pedal face. I typically don't use these maybe especially on the clutch or the accelerate i would never use this maybe on the brake pedal depending what kind of shoes i was using when i was driving and yeah because this is this is very very abrasive you know it will tear the sole of your shoe up <laughs> and yeah this longer one obviously is for that long throttle pedal face over here last but not least we get this dot four brake fluid they actually give us brake fluid with the brakes. This is the first time, actually, I've got in a bottle of brake fluid with a hydraulic brake set. So this is dot four. This is what is originally in. Let me give you a closer look there. It's Brembo, good quality brand. So it's dot four. That's what's currently in the clutch and the brake pedal cylinders, and that's what you want to keep in there. You don't want to change this to a dot three or something like that. I'm a little surprised they're not using synthetic, but yeah, dot four. Just want to make sure you use the same stuff in there. You don't want to mix and match because the seals, you know, you go down to dot three, it's a different type of chemistry in that. And these seals are not made for that type of chemistry. So you make darn sure you keep dot four in there for long life on your seals. And that's it. That's all the accessories we get. And what we'll do next is just go ahead and get to the adjustments. So let's take a look at adjustments on the throttle pedal. Not a lot to adjust here, but something that you do I want to pay attention to because it's important you don't mess this linear potentiometer up or linear position sensor. So first off, this only has a certain amount of travel in it. So there is a bottom out length here and there where this rod will go all the way out and then hit a stop internally here. You don't want to have this sticking out so far that you're hitting that. So every time you use the throttle pedal and you hit the stop down here, that you're not yanking on this and hitting the stop inside. That'd be very, very bad. Wouldn't last very long that way. So there's really no way to tell where that is without taking it off and taking a look so that you don't violate that if you're moving your pedal more forward. And you would actually take this pin back here that the rod end is sitting on, and we could move that to the next one up if we needed to, to avoid that from happening. And we're going to take a look at that just to see where I'm at. Now, the nut on here, by the way, they have a little locking nut situation going on. We have a nut that's locked up against the back of the little clevis with the ball end in it right here. And then we have the nut that's attached to the rod itself. So I'm gonna take a seven millimeter wrench, that's what this is. And I'm gonna undo the first nut up there, which is the locking one. Very simple stuff here, guys. 
Let's loosen it up a little. There we go. And now I should be able to rotate this and unscrew it out of the lever itself. I'm going to do that. I'm just doing it counterclockwise. And you can see some thread coming out. And eventually it will come out of there. That's good. It's got a nice long thread on it. So that gives it good support when it's inside of this rod end piece here. Now I can go in and see what's going on with this. And here's what I was talking about. I can pull this up, but there's a stop in there. Won't go any further than that. You don't even, I would like to have five to 10 millimeters before that so that I'm ensure I'm not gonna be yanking against the front of this because with this spring in here and this lever, you could damage this very quickly. So there's only one way to find out how much room we have in that. I'm just gonna extend it all the way rest it up against the pedal like that and I'm going to take my calibers and try to get a measurement off this thing so I don't uh, move it around while I'm measuring it. I'm going to say that's about 53 and a half millimeters. So that means that's what I have to play with but that's all the way bottomed out so I would rather have it more like 48 or so when I have the range on this to, or as far as the angle is concerned on the lever and the face plate here where I want it to be. So at least I know where it's at now. And that's very important if you're gonna be adjusting forward. Now, this is pretty straight as it is right now. Go ahead and screw this back in. And I'm also going to come back in and tighten up that little nut on the front there. It goes up against the lever surface like that. Just snug it up and now it's nice and tight. So I know what my limit is. Now I'm going to come back and measure this again. Where am I at now that it's sitting here? And that is 46 millimeters. So I've got four, I got, you know, I got seven millimeters before the stop. So I'm comfortable with that as long as I don't have to go much further in the angle, which I don't think so. If you look at this angle, it is leaned back a little bit. Typically in a throttle, I want some kind of lean on it, not completely straight up, but that is totally subjective. And it really depends on your setup in your cockpit and how your foot is addressing the face of that pedal. So that's what's really important there. So it's very easy to adjust the angle. And I'll show you how to do that. Now, the included wrench is an eight millimeter wrench, as you see here, and you can use that for this. I have my own eight millimeter, so I'm gonna use that one. And all you're gonna do, you'll see you have a locking nut on the top here. And there's a washer in there. It might be a lock washer too, I imagine. And we have to loosen that. So I'm gonna turn that this way, which would be counterclockwise if you're looking from this way, loosen that up, and then it should be able to adjust this bolt up and down inside of the lever to get the angle you want. So let's see what happens there. I'm gonna go ahead and just take this and loosen it up. Okay, nice and loose now. And then what you'll do is take pressure off the pedal, off the stop itself, and then you can just reach in with your fingers and just roll it up a little bit. I'm not going to go too far because I don't want to overextend that. And again, the locking nut will determine how far up it goes. So I'm going to let it back down now. There we go. So now you can see the angle on this pedal is straight up and down pretty much. Probably where I'm not going to have it. And I would still come in if that's where I would need it to be. And I would take another measurement. And I'm sitting at 49.7 millimeters. Yeah, that's pretty darn close. So what I would probably do is take this and move it forward so it would stick in further. Now, when I had it off, I didn't show you exactly how far it goes in. And it goes in really far. So let me just show you that real quick. So you know that your limit for the how far it goes in is very far. Look at that. It goes all the way to there. Of course, you want some sticking out, I would imagine. But that's the stop. Actually, the nut... And this nut on the back of this shaft is actually attached to the shaft in the manufacturing process. So that's the limit on that way. So that's what you would use as a reference if I took this out and moved it up one hole to accommodate the forward motion. Now, how would I ever want it that far forward? Well, let's say I wanted to invert this pedal for whatever reasons. Then I would want it sticking out more that way. So this will give you the range. And that's nice that they have all these holes in here so you can move this position sensor just about anywhere you need it to be. And I'm going to go ahead and roll this back in because I know I don't, I don't, I'm not going to want it at that angle. I'm going to roll it back out a bit. 
and eh, it's a little bit too much. Again, it's very subjective. I'm just kind of going eyeball here the way I think I'm going to want it. And it's easy enough to change, even when it's on your rig, already mounted the cockpit. Now, the last thing you're going to do is, obviously, we're going to go ahead and lock this nut back down. Now, again, I'll take my, well, this is the 8, the 8 millimeter, and just tighten that up. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on this. You just don't want it to move. There we go. So there's my angle now. And I'll put my position sensor back in. i got to get my little angle right here. This is very easy stuff to do. Easy to work on. I think even when it's mounted on your pedal base, you'll have enough to work on. Now, I can also adjust the length of this by screwing this in or out as much as I want to. I mean, this thing will, will screw all the way in to where both of these nuts are just next to each other. You don't have to have it that far in. So I can actually make micro adjustments by turning this out a bit like that and then taking the smaller nut that locks up against the lever and we'll just spin that baby up there like that. We'll come back in with our seven millimeter, which is not in the kit, by the way. <laughs> and then I'll just give it a, just tighten it up a little bit. You don't have to get real tight with this stuff because there's not a lot of tension or pressure on this sensor. So now let's see where we're at. You want to keep checking this because you don't want to make a mistake and have to replace your sensor. Now I'm at 42 and a half millimeters. So I'm 10 millimeters from the bottoming out the stop in here. I would say that's a pretty good safe range. I'm happy with that. I'm confident I won't hurt it. <laughs> now we do have another adjustment in the back here and that is that same kind of adjustment in the front for travel but this is for the pedals travel this way and I think that's plenty for me already. I might adjust that once I get everything put up together and we're sitting in the rig pushing on it. But I think that's going to be plenty of range for me to be able to modulate the cars the way I, I usually like to. But then again, I might fine tune it once I get in there. So that's it pretty much for the throttle pedal on adjustments. Now there is a face plate adjustment. You see how far this is sticking up now in the back? There are two bolts in here and these are also M8 bolts in the back. Put this up here, it keeps uh, snagging on my rubber thing over here. So we got two bolts up there, and we want to take those loose, obviously. And I'm going to use my little ratchet 8 mil that I've been using so far to get things loose. It's just a little quicker, just so it's loose enough for me to get in here and get my fingers on it, which not quite there yet. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and get the bottom, do the same thing. If I can keep it on there. I don't want to hurt my anodization here either. <laughs> okay. So easy enough. We're just going to go in there with our fingers and always take the bottom one out first because the top one will keep it hanging and it won't fall over on you. All right. So there we go. So these look to be little like little M6 bolts here. We have a washer there. We have a lock washer. You can see the little piece there on the lock washer, little slot in it. And we'll go ahead and take the other one out now. Nice and loose. You might want to jiggle a little bit while you're taking it out or putting it back on to get things to line up properly. Go ahead and take this one out so it doesn't fall out. And here's the back of our throttle. And you can see it's got some hollowed out pieces here for lighter weight, I guess. It's not just a flat piece in there. It's kind of nice they went to the extra steps of milling this out. And you can see the mill marks still in there, I think, in the lights, the little tooling marks. And you can see we have two sets of threaded holes here. I believe this was on the bottom one, maybe the top one. And they have one down here. I'm not sure what that's for. But again, this is a good chance to look at the finish on the this pedal set. And it's very good everywhere you look. I mean, just really nicely done here. So it was sticking up kind of far before. So that means it was on this hole and this hole. So if I wanted to drop it down, obviously I would put it on this hole and this hole. Simple enough. I'm not going to drop it down because I kind of liked where it was, I think. And when I put these back on, I usually take the bolt and just put it through the hole first. That way I can kind of look at it this way as I have the plate in my hand and kind of line it up with the hole that I want to use. If I was going to lower it, I would have that hole there. And you can see how low that is compared to where it was before. The top of this is actually even with the top of the lever. But I don't think I'm going to have it that low. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back where it was. 
And again, I'm kind of looking there so I can show you guys too at the same time. It's a little easier when I have to do this on video. And you might have to wiggle it around a little bit to get the thread started, but that's all you gotta do is get them started. And then we'll come in, and if the machining is correct on this, which it should be, I'll go ahead and get the other one started. Get my fingers in there wrapped around the lever there. Yeah, pretty easy. But you might want to jiggle a little bit when you're turning it. That kind of helps get the threads going sometimes. I think that's got it. So we'll go back with our little ratchet and tighten these guys up. Again, I'm not going to put a lot of torque on this because it's a very nicely put together precision system here. You shouldn't have to really tighten it down real hard. Plus, we've got those lock rings in there, the lock washers, and you just really want to compress those lock washers. You don't want to over compress them because then they lose their spring and they're not doing anything then. All right, so that's it for the throttle. Nicely done. Again, I might take the brake out to show you that bearing, but I'm afraid those needle bearings might fall out, so I might not just leave that alone. <laughs> when we come back, we'll take a look at the adjustments on the brake. Now we'll take a look at the adjustments available in our brake pedal, and a lot of this is going to be the same for the clutch pedal over here because they have basically the same layout, except the resistance media over here is a solid spring, when here we have some bumpers and a spring. So it's going to be pretty much the same. Now, for pedal angle, right now it's pretty straight up and down, looks like it to me, and I can bring this back by adjusting the rod that attaches to the piston internally into this cylinder here, this master cylinder, and I can loosen this 14 millimeter nut and then screw it in or out, right? But the thing is with this is it's not easy to turn that rod. So we're going to have to take this off, but we can cover another adjustment while we do that. So we'll go ahead and do that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do first is take this out. Now this is a two and a half millimeter metric wrench size right here. And I'm going to take that out. Now you can see on the other side, there's no nut over here. It's just this flat piece. Interesting. So you really can't get a wrench on that to really get it tight. So usually that's what that's meant to be, something that you can't torque down hard on. So they don't want you squeezing this too tight. And you shouldn't have to to keep it where it is. Remember, the pressure is this way, not this way, when you're using the pedal. So I'm going to go ahead and get my, wherever it is, two and a half mil. And I'm just going to take that screw out very quickly. And you can see it's a little screw here. It looks like an M3. Get back off these, these huddy wrenches are pretty tight, which is nice. And we got a little flathead M3 screw over here. And we also have this flared washer that has a countersunk piece in it, so this will sit flat. Then we have the pin in there itself. I suppose I can take some pressure off of this and just slide it out, I'm thinking. I'm just gonna try to pull it out from the other side. This is why I use these gloves, because they're grippier than my fingers are. Looks like it's in there pretty tight. I might have to encourage it. So I'm going to take a, my 4 millimeter wrench here and just kind of push on that. Let me see where it's sitting here. I'm not going to get into the threads with it, because it's too big to go in there, which is, you don't want to do that. You muck up your threads, you got a problem. Let's kind of get it started. Now I'll go out to the other side here. You can see it's kind of sticking out. I'll just kind of roll it and pull it out. I'm also going to support the rod end, which didn't fall, okay. Good, didn't fall. And there's the pin. See, it has a solid shoulder on it all the way through, which gives us good support and allows that bearing inside a rod end to swivel on this freely. Very nice. And the tolerances are very good on this, by the way. It's very precision as far as the machining is. I like it. All right, so now, oh, there you go. See, it fell. <laughs> So the pedal will fall forward, and you can just let it rest there like this, and then we have our rod in. Now this is how I would do it as far as turning it. Now, I'm gonna take my 14 mil wrench here and loosen this nut. I thought I already did that, but okay, there we go. Run the nut back a little bit, and you can see what this rod in is actually looking like. Actually, there's not a bearing in there, so it's just a sleeve, check that out. See that? It's just a bushing, some kind of a bronze bushing or something. So there is no, rod into this. Interesting. Now, I'm not sure if that, that looks like, this looks like to be a race work part. See how the anodization is done on it? Right, let me just go ahead and pull that off. 
You better look at it. Whoa, there it goes. <laughs> yeah, this looks like to be a race work part because it looks like to be aluminum. It's been anodized, and you can see it has that bushing in there. Hmm. All right, so we would put this back on, and if I want this pedal to come back, I'm running my nut back down this threaded rod here, so I have room to screw this down. So the more I screw it down, obviously, the more this is going to lean back. So where do I want it to lean back? I'm not positive yet. It really needs to be mounted to do that final adjustment. But I'm going to look at it sideways and take a guess and line up that clevis end into the hole so I can see where it's at. And that's a bit too much. I definitely don't want it there. But if I pull this all the way up to the top one, you can see it comes back even more. So as I go down, and this would be the hardest position right here, if I wanted the most pressure possible, I would have it up here in this hole, the top hole. And again, in the middle is more like a GT3 car. They say in their instructions up here, it's more like an F1 car on the top. And down in the bottom, it's softer. I'm not sure what car that would be like, but yeah. So in the bottom, you can see it's actually tilting more forward. As I come up, it tilts back to match that hole. So that's going to be relative to what you want also. I'm going to leave it in the middle for now. So that means I don't want it tilting back that much in the middle. And if you want to, you can take your pin, just so you can get a better look at it, and put it back in the holes. Let me put it back in the middle hole here. It has a, a very nice fit on these. They did a good job on the machining. Put it back in, and then I'll take a look at it. So that's leaning back a little bit too much based on what I want for my throttle. Although I could come back on my throttle a little bit if I wanted to. See the difference there? Yeah, so there's a difference there. I could come back on the throttle if I wanted to. But I think that's a little bit too far back for me. So I would pull the let's get my throttle out of the way. Pull the pin back out by twisting it, holding everything together with this hand over here. Go ahead and I'm gonna run this out some more. Kind of back where not quite back where it was. I'm just gonna give it a few turns to see what that looks like kind of looking down here in the hole and seeing where that's sitting. That's better, I think. Yeah. Again, this is something you're going to have to adjust as you, I'm going to do one more turn, as you're using it. I'm going to leave it in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and put my pin back in. And this will give me that GT3 car force according to their instructions. Put the pin back in. Yeah, I think it's more. <laughs> Good thing I have a rubber mat, huh? I think it's more where, I'm, where I want it to be because I, I'm going to be doing heel and toe. When I press down on the brake pedal, I'm going to be swinging my heel over and hitting the throttle. So I, you, typically you want your brake pedal to come, when you're compressing it, to come down a bit more than where your throttle is so you don't have a problem reaching over there to the throttle. So I think I'm just going to leave it there. And I'm going to leave it, obviously, in the middle position for the GT car, supposedly GT car feel, as far as the manufacturer's telling us. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in, which is again the two millimeter screw in the washer. So it will hold it there. And I'll run my nut back up. Thread a rod here that connects to our piston inside the cylinder. And put my 14 wrench and just give it a little snug. I don't, you don't have to tighten this up a lot. I'm just kind of locking it down a little bit. And there you go. So this is how we're going to adjust both angle and the force that it requires to push the pedal. I'm going to leave it in the middle. I'll probably try it in the higher one. I'm not sure if I'll try it in the lower one, but again, I might just to be playing around with it. All right, so the next adjustment we're going to be concerned about is going to be obviously the bumper stack and the spring stack. What do you want to feel? Totally subjective. <laughs> Depends on what you want. Now, right now, if I put my hand back here and hold this thing, I'm not pinching this. I'm just kind of pushing back against the back plate here. And I pull on this. Again, bench testing is really hard to tell what the heck this thing feels like. Really need to get it underfoot. That might be what I like. I don't know. But let's say I didn't. And I want to change out the spring for bumpers. We get two extra bumpers here. There are a white one and a red one. The white one is supposed to be a 70 shore rating, and this one is supposed to be 95, the red one. So let's find out if they are 
I'm going to go with the red one first. Let's see what we pull off this. Now, these are fibros, by the way. See fibro? Which have a good reputation as a very accurate bumper. So I like that they're actually using these fibros. They have good consistency across as far as their ratings, as far as the experience I've had with them, mostly with the Husing belt pedals because they've always used them. So, yep. Yeah. Let's see, get it down flat. Yeah, that's about 96, actually. I don't know how well you guys can see that. So that's about 96, so, yeah, 95, it works for me. And let's see what we got on this one here, the white one. And that comes out to, actually, more than 70. 76, 77. Let's go back to the back. Yeah, so it's consistent wherever I put it down at. So that's more like 76, 77. Close enough, I guess as long as we know what they are. So let's say I don't want to use the spring. That means I have to take the spring off and put my bumper on, and this is the nut we have to take off. Now this is a 13 mil nut. And I'm gonna loosen that, because it's got some preload on it. This is also how I would put preload on this also. So if I turn this tighter, this way, it's gonna pre-compress that spring. So if I'm going in a, if you're looking at it this way, it'd be clockwise direction. I'm compressing the spring. Now it can only go so far because there is a spacer in there. I don't know how you can see it. There's a black spacer in here. And there's also a piece coming off of this. It's not a washer. It's actually a screw on piece to hold the spring from moving around. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and we'll give you a better look at all that. So now it's loose. I'll pull the nut off and again, I want to talk to you a little bit about once I get this off, what we're doing here and where to be very careful with hydraulic pedals, all of them, not just this set. Because I've seen stuff on some YouTube videos where guys are actually showing bent rods, piston rods on the slave cylinders. Or not the slave cylinders, rather on the master cylinders. And it was a, you know, a wheel wood, which is not the, the best reputation for strength and durability, but yes, yeah, still, uh, it was bent. But you're very vulnerable when you start taking this media off of here. Or if the manufacturer does not put a strong enough spring on the slave cylinder, you can still cause damage. And I'll explain that in a minute. So here's the spring. Purple. You know, it, at first when I saw purple, I said, why don't they pick purple? But I guess, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's better than like uh, gold, I guess. <laughs> so you got purple spring and you have the spacer here. And that's what I was talking about. This spacer is internal. So it stays on the rod there, like that. So you can only get this down so far before it hits it and bottoms out. So you can only put so much preload on that spring, which is probably a good idea to put this in there like that. And then you also notice on this piece I took off, this nut, and it's performing a nut function. You can see it's got threads in it there. That this piece fits inside of the spring and keeps it from sliding off. It's not totally tight, precision fit in there but good enough to keep the spring from sliding off anywhere, right? So that's also a very good thing. Now, when this stuff is off like this, you do not want to mess with the brake pedal, the lever, pushing against the master cylinder. Because if you do, there's nothing to keep this piston internal here from going all the way back and bottoming out into the back of the bore that's sitting in here. So it hits the back, now you got a problem. And three things can go wrong. First thing is, bottoming it out like that can get you a hydro lock, which is hard on the seals. Not only that, but hydro lock means eventually some fluid usually seeps past the seals in all of these type of cylinders. And if a little bit gets back in there and you push this all the way down and it bottoms out, it squishes everything out except for a very thin film of hydraulic fluid. And remember, hydraulic fluid doesn't compress. It also is hard to get off if you get a hydro lock. So you press it in there, you keep pressing on the pedal, it, it just squishes everything out and creates a vacuum, basically. And you'll never get this piston back out without drilling a hole in it and trying to relieve the pressure. So it's, and if you notice, which is kind of cool, and I did this in a closer look, there is a set screw in the back of this. So if that happens, you can take the set screw out, let some air in, break the vacuum, in other words, and then it will slide back out. You can pull it back out, right? Or you can use it if you, after time, if you think there's some fluid in there, you can take the set screw out and kind of tilt it over and see if any fluid comes out. 
It also gives you a gauge on how well your seals are doing. And the seals inside of this are, again, supposed to be very good. They've been testing them a lot, and I showed you in the closer look. If you saw that segment, the testing machines they use for both the seals and just overall durability of the pedals, that they've been doing that for the last few months and, yeah, coming up with different designs. And we have their last design for production, so I'm told. So, right. So, if you do that, you got hydrolock, you'll never get this thing pulled back out, right? Unless you relieve the, the vacuum back here. That's how good the vacuum is, especially the very tight tolerances that we have in these slave cylinders. Now, the third thing that can go wrong is if you bottom out the piston in here against this housing and you keep pushing on the pedal, you can bend the rod over here on the master. And I've actually seen that in a video a YouTube video that somebody was reviewing the pedals that happened. Now, I'm not saying that it's their fault they did that. It could be a problem where the manufacturer didn't have enough resistance in the media, like a spring or whatever, that wasn't hard enough, and they pressed it all the way down and bottomed it out. But if you press the pedal, the hydraulic pedal all the way down, and you hit a stop and it doesn't go anymore, I mean a hard stop, not a hydraulic stop, but a hard stop, you should not be pushing on that pedal anymore because... These things aren't made to do that. It, then it becomes a pressure you know, load on that shaft that it was never intended to take that kind of pressure and it will bend on you. Simple as that. So anyway, again, this is why I'm telling you, be very, very careful when you have this thing loose and no pressure on it. Don't touch the pedal. Don't maneuver it. Don't try to press it down. Don't let somebody else accidentally press it down because you can lead to a lot of problems. You're going to have to get the manufacturer probably to fix it for you. So be careful when you're doing stuff like that. Okay, enough said. So we've got a washer here separating our bumpers as we usually see in these kind of setups. I'll take this one off here. I'm going to take the other washer off and we'll take the other bumper off. Really don't need to do all this, but I just thought I'd show you. And I kind of wanted to test them too while we had them out here. If I had my, get my cage back over here. I'm going to test this one and see where it's at. That's the same thing, 76. So remember, this one was 76, and that was the original one that we were testing. So Fibro, again, has a very good reputation. Now, this one's a little bit more than that. Well, maybe not. I'll have to take a couple of readings. Yeah, that's 76 and a half, so close enough. So they're very close as far as from bumper to bumper as far as their rating, which is very good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put the two originals back because, well, I need to. I don't have enough spring and i'm not going to be running the spring so i'm going to put this on here i might be running the spring i'm just saying i'm not saying i'm not going to be running it but and i'm going to leave the spacer off if i was going to be running a bumper now i have a chance to either use the white one or i can use the red one i can't use them both because there's no washer in between them however i could use them both if i put my own washer in here just to check it and see what it felt like All right so you could play around with that but they do not include another one of these washers and they tell me that it's only supposed to be one in there anyway. <laughs> but hey, we can play, can't we? So if I wanted to change it to that bumper, then I would do it just like this. And now I would take this and turn it around. I don't need this part anymore. Remember the part that's retaining, help retaining that spring in there? I don't need it anymore, so I'll just flip it around and run it in this way. Because I want a lot of surface area contacting this bumper. And this way, it would not do it right. So go ahead and roll that down. And there is some preload you can put on these, but I usually just kind of tighten them down so they're all making contact and just leave it at that. Then I put my nut back on, tighten it down so it doesn't move, and there you go. Now we're going to have a much stiffer brake pedal than if we had the spring. And we're not going to have much initial play. We're going to have a little bit because all hydraulic systems have that. A little bit of play right there. That's how much it moves. So now I pull it down. I can actually feel, I don't know, sure. It feels about the same resistance to me <laughs> that the spring was. This is a pretty tight spring, I think. So it feels about the same to me on the bench. But then again, it's hard to tell on the bench, as I always say. So there you have it. Not much else to adjust here. Now we do have the pedal face adjustment, but it's just like the throttle pedal. And I, I guess I'll go ahead and pull it off just because I'm kind of curious to see how far up or down we can go with this. Let's flip this back around. I'm just gonna take the nut off the back like we did on the throttle, if you saw that part. Just loosen it up. Like that. We'll come down and get this one. 
I always take the bottom bolt out first so that it won't flip around on you when you take one of them out. I'm just gonna get my fingers in here, loosen this up. Should come right out. And it does. And again, it's a little M6 bolt in there with a lock washer. Go ahead and pull the top one off. And let's see where we're at on this high or low. So it's on the highest position. No, it's lowest, okay. All right, so it's the lowest position. It was in this one and this one here. So that hole and this hole. So if I moved it to this hole this hole, obviously it would raise it up. And that would put it at about, I'm balling it, about that high. Which is pretty high. I don't think I'm gonna need it that high. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go back to the original. So again, it's the same thing as the throttle pedal. Again, I like to preload the bolt so I can see what I'm doing when I'm holding this up here and trying to get it started. I just kind of turn it with my fingers. Again, kind of showing you guys and doing it at the same time on the angle. It's a little tricky sometimes, but we'll get it done. There we go. We got that one started. Don't want to get it too tight because we still want to get this guy in. And sometimes, again, you have to jiggle these around a little bit to get the threads to line up and start it properly. You don't want to start them crooked because then you'll strip the threads out, and you do not want that to happen. You strip the threads out, then you're going to have to, if you even have a tap, you have to go back in there and clean them all up with another tap if you haven't stripped them so bad that you have to redrill the hole and go to a bigger bolt and, or maybe do a, an insert or something like that to make sure everything's working or get it back to where it was. All right, so then we're going to tighten this up just like we did on the throttle. Again, you don't have to get it so tight that you can't move it. This stuff fits together really well. They've done a great machine job on all these parts that I've handled so far. And there we go. So now we're done with all the adjustments on the brake pedal. And what we'll do is go ahead and even though it's going to be a lot the same, we'll go ahead and take a look at the clutch pedal next. Now we'll take a look at the adjustments on the clutch pedal. These adjustments are pretty much exactly the same as what we just saw on the brake pedal adjustment segment. If you watch that, the only difference is our media for resistance is different here. Here we have a spring. And of course, it's a much longer spring than it was on the brake pedal. And all we're going to be able to do here is adjust the preload on the spring itself. Other than that, the only other adjustment we're going to have is the holes in the lever itself. And if we put it in the top hole here, it's going to make it harder to push the pedal. In the middle is the medium. And if I put it down the bottom hole there, then it's going to make it the easiest to push the clutch pedal, depending on what you want. Plus, the preload is going to make a difference. And the preload is this nut here and also the nut behind it. And I'm calling this a nut because essentially it's performing that purpose. And I'm going to go ahead and take this off. This is a 13 mil nut on the front of this, which is not in your kit, at least not in my kit of tools when they came. So let's take that nut off, set it aside, and then I'm going to finger turn this piece here because it is also threaded onto the rod, just like the brake. Slave cylinder. And as I do that, I'm just going to kind of grab the spring a little bit so it doesn't fall down or anything. And I'm just going to roll it off of there, just like that. There we go. And it's exactly the same as the brake because if we pulled the spring off of here. It has this piece in here that retains the spring. So it keeps it from moving around on us. Now, oddly enough, there, and just like on the brake cylinder, let me put this so it doesn't roll away. On this cap here, there is no retaining ring for the spring, even though it doesn't move. It also gives us a chance to look at the four bolts that hold the cap onto the slave cylinder itself which has seals right behind it, obviously, so this can go in and out and not leak. i give you a better look at how that's assembled. And again, we're at a very vulnerable point here, and you want to make sure that you do not manipulate the pedal lever and push this rod, because it'll be very easy to do, and bottom it out into the slave cylinder bore at the end back here. Again, we discussed that in, when we were doing the brake adjustment, so make sure you don't do that. All right, so now that I have that adjustment, Pretty easy, not much else to do there. I'm gonna go ahead and run this back on here real quick. Get her started, get her started, there we go. And I'm holding the spring up as I roll it in so that it will go inside the center of the spring and hold it up like it's supposed to. 
put a little bit of preload on this baby. Not too much. Again, once I have it underfoot, I'll know what I really like. And then we'll use this as a locking nut again. Just spin that on there. And then we take our 13 mil wrench and just put some tension on it. You don't really have to turn it hard and get it real tight because it'll the spring pressure here pushing against that other piece is going to keep it from coming off. Pretty easy, right? Now there's one more adjustment I'm going to do that I did not do on the brake. And that is the master cylinder over here, the reservoir, needs some brake fluid. I'm going to go ahead and pull the cap off. Again, be careful when you pull the caps off. If it's sloshed around a little bit, you could have brake fluid on there. It could drip down and get on to some metal or something. And it's very corrosive stuff, brake fluid. So you want to be sure you're careful when you're messing with it. It won't burn your hands like acid or something like that. Or burn, you know, some people say it burns their hands, but I've never had brake fluid burn my hand. But there you go. Uh, it's very corrosive on metals and finishes and stuff, so you do want to keep it off of everything as much as possible. If you do get it on something, you can use brake cleaner to get it off. Um, isopropyl alcohol also works if it's just a small bit. You don't have to spray something brake cleaner because it usually goes everywhere. But you can see it's definitely wet there, a little bit on there. But the reason I'm doing this is it's going to be hard for me to show you this because I can't lean it over too far. Hopefully I can lean it over far enough. So you guys can see it without me exposing the hole. You can barely see the hole there, I think. This is tricky. <laughs> I think you can barely see the hole in the bottom of our reservoir. You don't want to expose that because then the air can get in there, right? But there's not enough fluid in here, obviously. The brake had good fluid in it when it came in. It had enough. Two-thirds full is what the manual states. But fortunately, they give us the brake fluid. And I showed you that in the accessories segment, that this comes with your pedals. Brembo Dot4 brake fluid. Only use Dot4. You do not ever want to mix dot three with dot four, so that kind of or vice versa, because yeah, it'll screw things up. Plus, the seals a lot of times seals are manufactured to tolerate a certain mix or chemistry when it comes to brake fluid, and these are designed for dot four. So don't ever put anything else in there. No synthetic. Again, I'm a little surprised they didn't use synthetic, but I'm sure there's a reason they didn't. So I'm going to very carefully get my paper towel out here, get ready, because <laughs> this can be a little tricky. And I'm going to put enough in here so that I'm confident that no matter what I'm doing, it's not going to expose the hole in the bottom of this reservoir and allow air to get in my system. I'm just going to go ahead and fill it up. What well, they say two-thirds, and pretty much it's leaning to the side. As you can see, there's a side angle, so I can't really top it all the way off. But I'm just going to get enough in there, so probably as high as the threads here when it's leaning. I, that's about how I want the level to be, I think. So I'm going to... Go ahead and put some in here. Hopefully, it'll cleanly pour. Now, it comes with a seal on it, and I've cut my seal off. I use a razor blade to do that on these kind of things. I usually have better success than trying to rip it off. It just doesn't come off cleanly. Sometimes it will if you peel it right, but then again, sometimes it won't, so I usually just cut it. All right, very simple. I'm going to pour it in, right? Hopefully, I don't make a mess of things. So let's do that. Beautiful. And we didn't get any on the bottle either. Sweet. All right. I'll go ahead and put the cap back on the bottle. Tighten it down securely. You don't want moisture getting into your brake fluid. That's another concern. That's a bad thing when moisture gets into your brake fluid, and it will attract moisture. That's why they change brake fluid out every, I don't know, depending on the use. A couple of years for a regular road car, maybe three years or so, it depends. And, of course, a car that you track or race all the time, yeah, they, they change the fluids out and flush those systems after every race or before every race, the new race. So now I'm going to show you what I have, hopefully without spilling it. You can see I definitely have more in there now. And it's right about where these threads start on the outside. That's what I use as my gauge. I got a pretty good pour there, so, yeah, I'm happy with that. So now we're going to carefully replace our lid or our top here, cap. The threads to engage. There we go. Really nice stuff here. I like the, the way these aluminum caps are done and the little pressure relief holes or weep holes, whatever you want to call them. So now that's the only adjustment I really needed for the clutch. And I still get to use my paper towels for something else. <laughs> so there we have it. It's pretty much, and there is a stop, by the way, just like on the throttle and on the brake. They all have the same stop in here. 
and it's at the bottom. I think you can see it right in here, down there. You see that little bowl hanging down there? So that's the stop, so you don't push it too far. And it's good they have stops on this system. Some systems don't, and you can have problems bottoming out if you, if you don't have the resistance on here. And you bottom this piston out in here in the slave, it's going to create a hard stop and cause you all kinds of problems, bending things, you know, hydrolocks. I discussed that in the brake section. But anyway, be careful. That's all. And you'll we'll have, get a lot of long service out of a hydraulic system if you just handle it properly. Let's take a quick look inside of this USB conversion interface that RaceWork has given me because I don't have a SimuCube wheel. I don't run one of those, so I won't be able to use the pass-through cable and just directly attach to the SimuCube, but those with a SimuCube wheel will be able to use that. This is USB conversion. Of course, we have the USB on this side and a 25-pin DIN connector over here. And again, if you saw on the closer look, this is the cable we're going to be using to attach our pedals to it. So nice that this is a CNC machine piece of aluminum. It has black hard anodized finish on it. Very nice. Obviously being encased in a metal housing, this offers much more protection to the circuit board inside from EMI RFI interference issues. And even if you only have a direct drive wheel, you can have those kind of issues with some racing equipment that you use in USB ports. So nice that they went to the extra mile to do this, but then again, at the price point, I totally expect it. But there's still pedal manufacturers out there today even that don't do this. They still leave their electronics just hanging out in the air with a piece of plexiglass covering it. <laughs> so maybe one day they'll catch on and, and do the right thing for their customers and help out a little bit with the EMI interference that we experience. Right, so let's go ahead and crack this thing open. We got some Phillips head screws here. Go ahead and unscrew those. Nice machine units. In other words, they have machine thread. So they've obviously drilled and tapped the holes in this case so that it's easy to get the screws in and out. Oh, it's nice to see no plastic. <laughs> All right, so now we have the cover off. This is what it looks like. And you can see there is a countersunk hole on each corner. Hopefully that's showing up so you guys can see it. And then we have these flathead screws that go into those countersunk divots. So it's just nice and flush. And again, on the front of this, it says race work. And for the driver, let's see if I can get you to see that easily. There we go. Race work for the driver who knows what he's doing. <laughs> Hopefully. So this looks to be, I'd say this is about four millimeters thick. Very nicely done. Anodized inside and out. All right. And inside, we can see we have, looks like to be a proprietary race work board. You can see their logo on that board. Not a lot to see here. It's just a circuit board. And there's the conversion chip there that has the firmware to do the conversions. And of course, we have our two interfaces and supporting circuitry in here. Now, I did notice there is a button here, see that little button right there. And that's used for either resetting or it might be used to put this in boot mode. So that we can load new firmware onto the board but it's not user accessible unless it, you put the cover on in it i saw this little hole here see this hole now that i was thinking about it a little hole over there on just over the driver part of our little slogan there so if i put that over here nope but if i do it over this way guess what it fits that hole is fitting right over the button so we can do a reset if we need to. Or again, also a firmware upgrade. So again, the housing here is a little thicker. It's, it's thinner here, but it's thicker on the outer pieces here. You can see the board is screwed into the bottom. And obviously there's some holes drilled there that they are using to put the screws into. And the holes don't come out the back. So again, little things like that let me know or give me some signs of the quality control and the quality of the build of a particular system, be it brakes, shifter, whatever, that we have here at the SRG. Just little fine touches like that, they pay attention to the details. But again, I think this is very nicely done, very compact, and yeah, having a, a metal box around this, again, is a big plus in my book. So yeah, hats off for them for doing this. This is the final configuration for the pedals, the way I have them mounted on my rig with the unconventional pedal base that I use that slides on linear rails. The 
4080 I'll usually run in here. I had to replace that with two separate 40 series profiles. Still have the 4080 up front here. And the reason is I had to get the spacing right. The spacing is a little bit wide here on these and it will not fit a 4080. So I had to go with the two single 40s and space them out to where I could just barely get the bolts in. But yeah, it's working fine. The heel tray up here, as we talked about it before on the mounting, I'm running the 40 millimeter spacers in here and I'm running them down there and everything's nice and solid. Everything feels good here. The spacing between this lip on the heel tray and the bottom base down here, a little bit further than I would like, but it doesn't interfere with anything, so I'm going to leave it without trying to rearrange my 40 series up here to make that work a little better. If I was going to run them permanently and this was my pedal set that I go to every day, then I would. But it doesn't interfere with anything is what I'm saying as far as where my heel is sitting and where the ball of the foot is addressing the pedal face up here. So everything's working out great. Even for heel and toe, it's working good. I had to raise all of these pedal faces. So they're sitting at their higher position. And that's just the way it worked out for me. Again, you might not have to do that. So yeah, everything's looking good. Now what we're going to do is get in, check out this calibration software that comes with the USB interface. And then we'll do some driving. Now we're going to take a quick look at the Racework pedals tuning tool. This is a graphical interface here, representation of what our throttle pedal is doing. I'm pushing on the throttle there, you can see it moving. I push on the brake pedal, you see it's also moving. And we have the clutch over here on the left. I also have the Racework Pedals properties for Windows 10 open that window just to take another look at things. You can see that these bars are kind of filled in a little bit on the X, Y, and Z rotation. And they should be, ideally, just a very thin line all the way down those axes. So we're going to make that happen, but we're also going to watch what's going on here. Now, if I press this pedal down in, in the throttle, it, if I press it down all the way, it's 38%, which obviously is not using up the full resolution of what this pedal is capable of. So we need to change that. And what the first thing I'm going to do is bring down, they have these little lines at the top of where the sensor is. You have sensor in the red line, the black line with the blue outline is the throttle the brake and the clutch representation. So the sensor is what we're going to mess with here. You can't, in fact, that's the only one you can adjust. So I'm going to pull this line down. It's going hard, going to be hard for you guys to see this because it's a black line, but I am pulling it down. You can watch my mouse uh, indicator here. And you can see as I do this, I can actually drag this down to where the throttle goes up. And that's just about where I want to be. It's hundred percent at full throttle. I got a little, see when I press all the way down, I got a little bit of dead zone there. That's kind of like I want it to make sure I'm getting full 100% throttle at full pedal. Now, if I go over here to the pedal properties and check that now, you can see how far the bar has moved from where it was before. What that means is I'm going to have to drag, there's another line on the bottom for the dead zone on the lower end, and I'm going to drag that up to where the sensor is, that red line is. I'm gonna just go just a bit further than the red line. I can see my throttle's gone all the way to zero now. So I'm gonna press the throttle. I should still have 100%, and I do, with a little bit of dead zone. See that little white piece on the top? And then when I let off, I'm all the way at the, and we're, I'm all the way at the bottom now, I should be, but I'm gonna go over here. And you don't have to use, by the way, the Windows properties to do this. I'm just using it as an extra visual tool. Now I'm still, getting a little jumping here on the sensor. It looks like it's jumping on my dead zone on the bottom a little bit. Take that and raise it up a little bit further because I don't want it jumping around when I'm sitting in the car, obviously. Or when I rest my foot on the throttle, which a lot of people do, then I also don't want it going over. So that's a pretty good dead zone for me there. I press the throttle all the way down, I'm getting 100%. So now I'm getting everything I want. So what I've done here with these two lines is adjust the range of that throttle pedal. So now it's zero to percent. You don't see any black line here all the way up to 100%. And now if I go over here to the Racework pedal properties for Windows, you can see it's a thin line. Like I said, that's optimal. And then if I push it all the way down, it goes all the way over. So that's what we want to do. Now we're also going to do that to the brake pedal. And when I press on the brake pedal, yeah, I'm only getting up to about Usually the pressure I'm going to be using on it 
looks like about 35 percent so we're gonna have to adjust that too we're gonna do the exact same thing i'm gonna bring this down to uh, i get it to where i want to and of course this part is very subjective how much pressure you want to put on the brake pedal now if i push it down it's not quite where i want it yet it's not 100 percent bring it down a little further and now i'm getting 100 percent and you can see where the sensor is crossing this line it's a blue line but it turns white when you highlight it or go over it with the mouse so now when i press the sensor it goes a little bit over that so there's a little bit of dead zone in that sensor now that again that's subjective of what you want i'm not sure yet if i want that or not i'm gonna have to be in the car driving it and i might come back and tweak it a little bit of course in iRacing it has its own calibration routine but we definitely want to set this up for Windows, all the Windows stuff. So that looks pretty good to me for 100%. Yeah, I think that's about right from a feel of what I can feel under my ball of my foot here when I'm pressing the pedal. All right. Now we'll go over here to the pedal properties and we'll see that line. It's changed for the Y rotation. You can see it grew a little bit when I clicked on it. So it's moving all the way to the end now. But we're going to do the same thing we did to the throttle. We're going to pull that up just above where that sensor is. And I'm going to rest my foot on it. Because a lot of times I'll rest my foot on the brake pedal. And I'm going to put some dead zone just above that. So I don't activate the brake and slow my car down when I'm going down the straight. It would not be a good thing. Yeah. I'm just resting my foot on it. It's just under it now. So now when I press the brake, I'm getting the 100% range I want. And yeah. A little hair of dead zone on the very end there. After it hits 100%. I think I can, I can work with that. Now we're going to go over to Clutch and do the same thing. We're just doing this. And by the way, let me go back over here to the Windows Gaming Properties. And you can see we have a nice line down there now. So we just got to do the same thing for the Clutch. We're done. Already I know the Clutch needs to come down quite a bit. So I'm just going to go over here and grab this little white line and drag it down. And then I'll see where the Clutch is engaging. That's just about there. And you can do this. I can actually go up a little higher or rather bring it a little lower is what I meant. And so that it, the clutch gauges 100% before I'm bottoming out on the clutch, which typically when I'm doing heel and toe like that, I'm not gonna be pushing the clutch all the way down to 100%, all, all the way down to the bottom of the stop on this clutch pedal. So yeah, this is where you can adjust that. Okay, I think that's gonna work out pretty well for me there. That's pretty much the pressure I want to put on that clutch pedal, and yeah, it's hitting 100%. So that's what you want. Now, obviously, with my foot resting on the clutch pedal, I don't want it to do anything. <laughs> so I can gauge the clutch. That'd be bad, too. Going down the straight, robbing myself with some power there. So I'm going to drag it oh, just a little bit above that. Rest my foot on it. And I don't see the clutch engaging. Again, I might have to adjust this. Let me just put it a little bit further up. Because sometimes you get excited and you're resting your foot on the pedal a little bit more than you should. So again, that's something you can watch in your game too and see what's going on with the pedal. So there we go. I got some dead zone in there now. Got 100%. Little dead zone at the end so I don't have to push it all the way to the stop like that. For heel and toe, I prefer to have it not all the way to the stop. All right, so we have it adjusted. There we go. Now we'll take a quick look at shaping over here. Well, wait a minute. Let's go ahead and fix our pedal properties line. Now you can see the lines I was talking about. Thin line all the way down to X, Y, and Z. That's what you want. So let's go to shaping. We'll go over that real quick now. Now here we can actually do the curves that we want to, say on the throttle pedal or on the clutch pedal or the brake pedal, whatever you want to do. Uh, profiles up here, we have current profiles. Profile 1, I'll go to profile 2. You can see how that changes to whatever's in our profile 2 window. Over here, 3, we have a more horizontal S pattern. If I change that to 3, you can see it changes that to 3. Now here's where you can manipulate them and you can assign the profiles one, one, one right now. All of them are assigned to one throttle axis, brake axis, and the clutch axis. If I go to the throttle axis and change that to profile three, then that's what the throttle will have. This profile right here. If I want it to be on profile one, which I do, which is linear, profile one is that. Now you pick the profile you want to change from up here in this drop down. Say I want to change profile two. There's profile two. I can actually take these each one of these little balls and drag them to change the profile. So if I want to reverse this a little bit, change my curve to where it 
comes in hot as under initial throttle and then it comes back down around that's what I can do now profile 2 down here is also changed mirroring what I've done here so if I change my throttle to profile 2 now that's the throttle profile I would have now the one thing about this and it's pretty straightforward as far as explanation and I can go in here and pick some default ones too they have some presets here so if I click that preset or we can do this preset depending on what you want to do so and then you assign whichever profile you want out of these three profiles down here because each profile is mirrored if I go to profile three the one down here I pick three up here it will change so now we have profile three so these are the profiles you can look at them one two three and decide which ones you want to assign over here to your throttle brake or clutch now it doesn't look like there's a save function in this app yet so I know they're supposed to be working on that but it's not here yet so I can't save a profile yet <laughs> so anyway I wanted to show you the shaping profile part of it and yeah that's about it for the raceworks pedal tuning calibration tool you definitely don't want to do the calibration initially when you get in here to get everything straightened out now you can also do the same thing in di view right so but this is a much friendlier graphical interface similar to the true drive if you have it connected to a semi cube wheelbase it's a much friendlier GUI to use to set your dead zones and get everything dialed in the way you want to we're in iRacing at Sebring in the Lotus 79 for some heel and toe fun. Some of the funnest stuff that I get to do is here on the track when I'm doing reviews. And yeah, so I'm leaning on the pedals here, doing a lot of slapping around and, and pushing them and just trying to push them to their limits or find out if they have any bad traits, if they have any defects, if they have any good traits. We're trying to find everything we can about the pedals in the short time that I have to actually test them. I've got almost four hours on them, and yeah, not all at once, obviously, because this heel and toe, especially in a full-size rig and full-size controls like this, is a physical workout. As you can see, I'm, when I'm downshifting especially, I'm really putting a lot of pressure on everything. So yeah, it can wear you out, but you know, about four hours or so. So far, nothing is broken, no bent pedal rods, no, nothing out of the ordinary, no leaks or anything like that. I always look for that in hydraulic systems. So they have responded quite well. The throttle pedal itself, I did have to let the travel go a little further than out of the box to get the resolution out of the pedal. I wanted to control my corner exits properly, feather in the pedal and get the power down right. So, but I was able to do that. The settings are there. So that's an important thing. Plus it's 12 bit through the USB interface. It's 16 bit if you're running this through a SimuCube wheelbase, if you have one. So got the throttle down. The clutch, nothing really special here. It is very smooth. These slave cylinders are smooth. They've really got the bore down right and they're, whatever the piston configuration they're using, it really comes together. It's, it's one of the smoothest feeling hydraulic systems I think I've had my feet on. They've done a real good job because that's what you're really feeling. You're feeling the, the slave cylinder going in and out as you're pushing and that can be smooth or not so smooth depending on the, the cylinder boards and how smooth everything is. But yeah, I really like the feel of that. But again, no pressure plate spring pushback or any of that stuff going on here. Just stabbing away at the pedal and yeah, just making the shifts. The brake pedal, the probably the most important pedal. I was able to get that dialed in pretty much where I like it. I'd like probably spend another week or so with it to really get it to where I think I can get it. But you know, this is something that takes me time to do to get it exactly the way I want. Like the pedal that I use normally from day to day, I've got that dialed in, but it took me weeks to get there. But now it's, it's great. And the important part is, you want to be able to transition from your threshold braking to your trail braking very, very smoothly and feel like you're controlling the car in that trail braking mode when you start your turn in, when you're taking all, the, taking all that load off the front end under threshold and then you start bringing the weight back towards the rear doing threshold so you can start turning for your corner coming up. So it did a good job there. I took it out to the ring here just to see how it responded on a left foot pedal type of situation and it did well here I, again I was felt like I was able to control the car pretty well but I still need some more time with it it just takes me a long time to really come together with a brake pedal and when you get there you'll know what I'm talking about if you've ever gotten there to be able to feel like you're actually controlling the car and the car is reacting to exactly what you're doing with your foot on the brake pedal this pedal I think has the potential to do that but everybody's a little different it's very subjective at the end of the day 
and maybe you won't but i got very close my lap times were pretty much the same i was able to control it that much but yeah i had to concentrate maybe a little more i was able to get my track times uh, rather my lap times at the track pretty much the same not quite yeah so not a lot to complain about one thing i did notice here is while i was driving and while i was watching some of this video i could see that the brake pedal had some lateral lash or play a little bit more than I thought it should have. And just looking at the video, you can see it kind of moving around there in a lateral direction. So after closer inspection, I realized that the lever where it pivots on the bearing, there's a bolt in the front there, ended up just going ahead and then taking the bolt out, putting some Loctite on it, and then tighten the bolt back down nice and tight. And then, yeah, everything was good to go after that. But in case you guys saw that, I just wanted to say that. Also something, a suggestion that I would have for race work is to develop their own base plate for their pedals so that you could actually just buy a base plate for it and then bolt the whole thing on like a lot of pedal manufacturers are actually doing these days. So I would like to see that. I know they definitely have the capability to do it. Overall, this is a good set of pedals except for that loose bearing in the brake pedal, but it's got to be the smoothest set of hydraulic pedals that I think I've ever tested yet here at the SRG. Final thoughts on the S1 Pro pedals from the guys at Racework. Out of the box, these pedals have a high quality feel and look to them. All the parts are made from 6061 aluminum billets, which makes the main pedal structures feel very stiff. The billets are custom CNC machined at a local shop, and they have a nice hard anodized finish to them. Attention to detail is apparent everywhere you look. All edges have clean chamfering. The throttle uses a linear position sensor in a custom spring setup. I was able to get it tuned to allow me to modulate the throttle as needed. The brake sports a Tilton master cylinder with a one inch piston, which is connected to a custom designed slave cylinder. The slave cylinder was developed in house where they have complete control of design and testing. The clutch pedal has a differently sourced master cylinder, which also has a one inch piston size. And of course, the same Racework slave cylinder. There is a free calibration app that allows the user to adjust their dead zones and create curves for the pedals. An easy to use graphical interface, but currently does not support saving your profiles. The first thing I noticed when putting the S1 Pros through the driving segment was how smooth they felt when actioning them. I couldn't pinpoint what made them feel this way compared to other pedal sets I've tested with hydraulic brakes and clutches. I know they have been improving on the slave cylinders bore, piston, and seals for quite a while now, and it looks as though it is paying off with a good result. I was able to get up to speed with these pedals quickly. The pedals offer enough adjustment to get what I needed out of them to put in consistent lap times, either using my heel and toe technique or normal left foot braking. They did hold up well to the few hours of heel and toe action without any ill effects like leaks, or stuck pistons. I discovered lateral play in the brake pedal after using it a bit, but once removing the bolt, putting some Loctite on it, and reinstalling, that play went away. At just over $2,000 before shipping, it would be nice if they included a pedal base assembly to assist in pedal mounting. Overall, I like the feel and performance of the Racework S1 Pros, but at this kind of price point, they are certainly not something that most of the sim racing community will be looking to buy. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.